I kept getting confused that I, I have these frozen cranberries and I kept thinking more cherries. get any sleep last night. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. I am in my home kitchen, and today I am making one of my favorite recipes from Dessert Person, like all of them. But this really is one of my favorites. I'm making sour cherry pie. To me, it really represents the top of the mountain when it comes to fruit desserts. And today's episode is really gonna be all about fruit pie construction, how to make sure the bottom isn't soggy, how to make sure it's baked through, you, the juices are thickened. And to me, there's just no more delicious fruit dessert than this one. All right, so before we get to the episode, Felix and I are here to thank Honey, our sponsor. Honey is an online shopping tool that searches for promo codes to a lot of your favorite websites, and it's a great way to save money. I use it all the time, but more on why I love it later, and now I'm gonna show you the episode. Right, right, Kitty? So I grew up in St. Louis, and in our front yard, we had a sour cherry tree that had been there for a long time. Eventually it died, and my dad had to cut it down. But for most of my childhood, every summer we would get like millions of cherries. And we would hang out my sister's bedroom window on the second floor to try to get as many as we could. And then my mom would bake pies and it became a tradition. And I still remember the flavor of those pies. You can make this all year long if you just find sour cherries that are frozen. You just need a rolling pin and a pie plate. Other than that, it's a really analog recipe. Everything kind of gets done by hand. Just make sure you have a large bowl for the filling. And then in terms of ingredients, I have my sour cherries right here and keep them frozen, don't thaw them. Leave them frozen, it'll help you out a lot. Then I have my pie dough. This is pie dough from Dessert Person. This is actually a double portion, so I'm gonna cut it in half and I have a top crust and a bottom crust. This is also the almond variation on the pie crust in Dessert Person, which means I just took out a third of a cup of flour and added a third of a cup of almond flour. So if you wanna see how to make this, check out our previous episode. I'm starting with already chilled pie dough. Other ingredients, I have a little bit of kosher salt, raw sugar, and a beaten egg for finishing the pie. Then for the filling, besides sour cherries, I have granulated sugar, a cup and a quarter. These cherries are very, very tart, so they actually require quite a bit of sugar to balance everything out. Porn starch, ground cardamom, ground cinnamon, if you like a different balance of spices, you can do that. There's, it's subtly spiced. A lemon for zest, some almond extract. I think that's it. This recipe for sour cherry pie uses a very, I would say a, a large proportion of fruit. The cherries cook down quite a bit and I really want all the benefits of the cherries and the flavors. So it calls for eight cups. I had a two pound bag of frozen cherries and it's a little bit shy. So I'm gonna supplement with the only other cherries that I have, which is actually a mix of sweet and sour. You can see that the, the difference between the sweet and the sour. So sour cherries typically are smaller, a little bit lighter in color. Sweet cherries can almost be purple and the sour cherries, even at their peak ripeness are really like a sort of like pinkish lipstick red. So you can see the diff. Sour cherries are very, very juicy. They have a lot of water content and it's much easier to work with them when they are frozen. So even if I'm making, like a, if I buy fresh cherries from the market, I'll actually still freeze them before I make the pie. Sugar is hydrophilic, so it attracts water. It will pull moisture out of the cherries. And sometimes what happens is by the time you're ready to construct the pie, your filling is like swimming in liquid and then liquid is gonna make it a lot harder to do your lattice and make your pie. So that's why I recommend using frozen. You'll get a better result. Okay, so for the filling, I have one and a quarter cups granulated sugar. Generally speaking, I mean, you could cut that back. It seems like a lot for a pie, but again, these are very sour and I think that it, they can really take the sugar. So go ahead and toss that. Then I'm gonna add my other filling ingredients. And this is just sort of, the flavors that I personally like in sour cherry pie. I'm adding five tablespoons of cornstarch, maybe a little bit more than I would add for other fruit pies, but sour cherries are so juicy, they have so much liquid. Then I'm gonna add some lemon zest. I'm not adding juice because like there's plenty of tartness already in the sour cherries. So two teaspoons, which is about 
you know, the better part of a medium lemon. Okay. I like a tiny bit of warmth in the background. So I'm adding a little bit of warm spice. For my personal preference, it's a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon cardamom. Because cherry and almond are a natural pairing, I add some almond extract. Not a lot, just about a quarter teaspoon. The pie crust that I'm using is made with a little bit of almond flour, but just a tiny bit. It's really kind of there in the background. So I just added a pinch of salt, and this is our filling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this all together. Now the trick is getting the pie assembled before this thaws out. You could obviously just take this back in the freezer or the fridge. I don't have room, so I'm just gonna leave it out of room temperature and try to work quickly. Okay, so I have to use this pie plate because I don't have another glass one. Well, I do, I don't know where it is. I actually have a swap because if I were to bake this fruit pie and wait for it to cool to cut it, we would be here all day. So I baked the one last night in glass. I'm just using a ceramic pie plate because that's what I have. And now I'm going to start to roll out my crust. So I do a lot of online shopping. I buy stuff for the cabin, I buy things for the cats and for my kitchen, and I always use Honey. So you hit the little button and it scans for promotion codes and in a matter of seconds, you see the savings in your cart. I never like to miss out on a deal and I don't think you should either. So you can sign up for free. So right outside the window, I have a man that's funny. This is so funny that this cat is now here. Oh, you came here the mic. Oh, kitty, you gotta get down. It's too muffled. Come on, kitty. So recently I bought some stuff to start a garden outside. You can see some containers with some plants. And Honey saved me $15 when I went to check out. Honey installs in just a few seconds. You can also support our channel in the process. So go to joinhoney.com slash Claire. That's joinhoney.com slash Claire. And thank you to Honey for supporting this episode. And now back to the recipe. This is my almond flour pie dough. I'm gonna cut it in half because this is a double portion. That looks good. Just to prevent some of it from softening too much, I'm gonna stick half in the fridge. Somewhere. I'm gonna roll this out into a round and lay it on my pie plate as the bottom crust. So I'll show you how to basically go from a square shape to something a little more round. When you have just the right amount of hydration in the dough, it has almost like a plastic quality. It's really easy to work with. It doesn't stick, but it doesn't crack either. And that, that's really, that's when you know like you really hit the hydration just right. So I start by giving it a little bit of a, th you know, thwack. And what I like to do actually is concentrate on the lines running through the corners. So I try to basically flatten out the pie crust along those lines. And then going on the other side, 90 degrees. So go ahead and dust it with some more flour. And then what I like to do is just kind of roll out where it's thicker. If you feel like when you lift up the rolling pin, you're getting butter on your rolling pin, like just flour it, roll it out, it's soft enough. So I wanna get this into about an eighth of an inch round. And then I like to, you know, keep rotating it. So once I get it to about a 13 inch round, that's about the right thickness. And this is why you have a bench scraper handy. If you have any little parts that are sticking, this will help you to lift and scrape up your pie dough. But this looks good, so I'm ready to lay it into my pie plate. There's lots of methods that you can do for this, and I'll show you. One method is if you feel like you're confident, you can truly just like lift it up with your hands and transfer it to the pie plate. That's often what I do. Another method is to use the rolling pin. So you start by flipping the edge of the pastry up and then rolling it onto the pin. You bring your pie plate over and you unroll it the same way, just like this, okay? Another way to do it is you can just fold the pastry. So it kind of depends on your comfort level. You can fold it in half and transfer it. You can fold it in quarter, you know, again and transfer it. I don't really find that that's necessary. Half is just fine. Center your pastry in your pie plate. And then what you wanna do is you wanna let it slump down to fill that corner between the bottom and the sides where those two meet. Rather than pushing in, I'm gonna actually kind of just let it slump down because you don't wanna stretch the dough into the pie plate. You wanna just let it fill in the gaps on its own and then press really well. Use your fingers, make sure that there is full contact all the way around. And now I'm gonna trim it. So trying to maintain that half inch clearance. You won't see this edge, so it's not so important, but that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna put this into the fridge while I roll out the second half. You want this to stay cold. It's already gotten a little warmer than I would like. Good, good enough, oh good. 
So now my second half of dough is gonna be the lattice. So I'm gonna cut this into strips. So in this case, I actually don't need the pie dough to be a perfect round. I want it to be round-ish, but it actually works out well for the purpose of the lattice to have a semi-square shape. Keeping it cold is really important. You want cold pastry for maximum flakiness. Sometimes what happens with pastry if it gets warm is the texture suffers, it's not as flaky. It loses its ability to really like stand up to the filling. This pie dough I made yesterday, that's another good tip. Like don't try to make it with pie dough that you just put in the fridge because it really needs that time to rest and cool down. So this is a process. It's best to do it in stages. I like the look of a lattice where you have two strips that are crisscrossing through the center of the pie. So that generally means an odd number of strips going in each direction. So for the swap, I was able to cut 10 strips and have going five in each direction. And I really like the look of that. So I'm gonna to try to do that again. A straight edge is really useful for this. I mean, you could just freehand it. Sometimes I just freehand it and I, you know, it's like, whatever, I don't care. Um, but I'm just gonna at least make sure I have a straight edge. And then in terms of the width, I think I'm going about like an inch, between an inch and a quarter and an inch and a half thick. All right, I hope I can get 10 out of this. What I like about how it's going so far is I have very little trim. I'm not really throwing away a lot of pastry. Okay, so here are my lattice strips. I'm gonna grab my bottom crust now and I'm gonna get rid of my rolling pin and I'm gonna start to assemble. Before your filling thaws out too much, go ahead and scrape this whole thing in. And you can see that it has thawed, like the, you know, there's some juiciness in there. That's fine. What you wanna avoid is having so much liquid from the cherries that the cherries are like swimming in it and that it's pooling and that's gonna make it a lot harder to complete your lattice because the liquid just gets in the way, it makes the crust wet and it can also burn if it gets on the crust. Now that you have your cherries in, go ahead and push them down really well because these cherries cook down quite a bit and so they'll lose volume. I'm gonna use my beaten egg and just dab a little bit of it around the rim of the bottom crust. And this is just to help the lattice stick. So now I have my strips. I'm gonna go five in one direction and five in the other. I'm starting with one of my longest strips and I'm just laying it straight across the center of the pie. Now don't press too hard because you're gonna end up having to lift up the pastry once or twice. Then I'm gonna take my next longest strip and lay it at a right angle in a cross, like a plus sign, right over top. And now I have, I'm gonna do on each side of these strips, to the left and to the right, two more strips in both directions. So that's five total, you know, running one way, five total running the other. Now as I lay each strip, I'm going to do this basket weave, which is a, sort of an over under pattern. So here you see the strip that's running for me left to right is over the vertical strip. So the next one I lay down is gonna go under the vertical strip, just like that. Now I'm gonna go in that direction the same way. I'm gonna go under. And now let's go back the other way for the vertical strips. So I have over, under, over. I wanna then do under, over, under, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna lift up this one to go under. And then lift up this one so I'm gonna do it on the other side again. Over, under. What I'm trying to do as I lay down each strip is make sure that the spacing is even so that there's the same like width of a gap in between the strips and that one isn't like way over to the side. Okay, so this is the last strip and I have my lattice with my basket weave. In between the strips, I form these little squares. I'm just looking to see that those squares are about the same size, that all of them are parallel. And then once I see that, I can start to press around the edge and make sure that they are stuck to that bottom crust along the edge. And once I do that, I'm gonna actually go in with my scissors and trim, because now I have a little bit of excess that I wanna get rid of. I'm basically trimming it off where I can feel the rim of the pie plate end, and then a little bit of pastry extends beyond that. So I'm gonna just give a little more egg wash around the border because the idea is that I'm gonna fold that little overhang up and over the lattice. And now I'm taking this overhang and I am folding it up. So one thing you can do is really press and like thin out the area of the lattice where it hits the bottom crust. 
and make sure that the bottom and the lattice are fully connected, bottom crust to work with. But that's it. I mean, you could leave it here. Like, there's a lot to like about the way that this looks. This is a pretty thick layer of dough along the border. The problem with that is it might not bake through in the oven and you might end up with this thick gummy edge of undercooked pastry and we don't want that. So at the very least, what you wanna do is thin out that layer. And I, you can do that simply by using this technique with a fork and pressing the tines of the fork into the pastry. And I'm using a little bit of flour to prevent sticking. It is thinning out and extending the edge of the pastry a little bit. So I tend to do a little bit of a wider crimp and I use my thumb and forefinger on one hand and my forefinger on the other hand and creating this, you see that? That wave pattern, okay? It's like a zigzag, whatever you wanna call it. So you wanna go all the way around, dusting my fingers in a little bit of flour and you don't want to stick. Any pie like this where I'm not par baking the bottom crust, so any double crust pie, really get it very cold and give it a chance to rest a little bit before you put it in the oven. For me, that means freezer. And then you can do the egg wash when it comes out right before it goes in the oven. But I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a little egg wash now. So I'm using my beaten egg and my pastry brush and I'm trying to really only paint the pastry part. So paint every surface of the exposed pastry. One of the things you wanna avoid is getting a lot of pooling egg into the little like divots of the crust just cause that can sometimes burn. And we are gonna bake this pie for like an incredibly long time. So now that I have everything glazed, my final, final touch is some raw sugar on the crust. This adds sparkle, it adds crunch, it adds a little bit of extra sweetness, obviously. It's just always the finishing touch on a fruit pie. I'm not doing this on the baking sheet, and that's because I could get egg drips and some excess sugar on the surface, and I don't want that to be on the baking sheet that then goes in the oven, because that can burn as well. I mean, look, the whole thing is gonna burn. You're gonna get crazy fruit juice everywhere, but you know, as much as I can avoid it, I will. So I have this on the baking sheet. I don't normally, bake with this much foil, but in this case, you're really gonna want it. And then this goes into an oven, 425. With any kind of pastry situation, you wanna bake really hot at the beginning. So I put it 425 for about 20 minutes, and that helps to initiate this puffing action of the pastry. And then once I start to see some color on it, after about 20 minutes, I drop the temp to 350, and it goes 350 the rest of the way, and I bake this pie for two hours, maybe even two hours and 30 minutes that long. And don't confuse the burning juices on the, on the baking sheet with burning the pie. Those are different. Sometimes like I have crazy smoke building out of my oven because the juices on the baking sheet are burning, but the pie is fine. The pie is just, you know, like chugging along. I just wanna say, I get really happy when the photo matches the recipe. And I think that's very important to me that there's truth in advertising. So, you know, the photo should somewhat look like your final result. But in this case, I'm like, it's pretty close. You'll see that where I had the crimps, that there's like a valley at the end of each crimp and that's where the juices found their little runoff area. And so in some of those areas, it got really dark because the juices have sugar in them, it evaporates, you end up with some burning, right? But even then, I don't really mind. You wanna really let it set. So like 24 hours later, that's a fine time to eat your pie. You don't want to cover it because it's going to soften your crust, but try to put it in like a, a dry location. So I'm gonna just go in with a little sawing action. This is what I like to see. It is juicy, but it's not liquid. You see the flakes in the crust? For the most part, I have a really cooked through pastry along the edge. It's nice when you fork into it that you hear the pastry shatter. It's a good sign. Mm. The flavor of sour cherries just will always remind me of my childhood and picking the cherries and trying to beat the birds, you know, to get all the cherries off the branches. It's just an amazing fruit and it makes, to me, the all-time greatest pie filling. And um, there's just maybe no other recipe that makes me happier than a sour cherry pie. Thank you for watching. I love that I now have an entire cherry pie. I'm gonna go eat my slice and um, like and subscribe. and cut.